Welcome back to Real Talk. I am your host, Yinka Olajuwon, and today we are at South Eatery and Social House, and we're going to be talking all about millennial mingling. I've got some great guys waiting inside, so let's get the conversation started. Hi, guys. Hello, hey. hello. Hi. How are you guys How are doing? You? Fine. We're good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Okay, guys, I'm super excited today because today we're talking about millennial mingle. Mm -hmm. And I know, like, tomorrow it's like, what is this? Okay, yeah. <laughs> what is millennial that's, mingle? That's what's going on. Okay, well, you know, like, in this day and age, like, everyone, especially in our generation, is so hard to date, it's so hard to, like, find somebody, you know, loyalty, respect, all that good stuff. So I want to start off. Is anybody here single? Yeah. Oh, you're single? <laughs> I mean, you're single, so you're married, right? So. Oh, well. Wow. I mean, technically, that's true now. I don't understand. With that, with that this type of Facebook. talk, that no, type but, of but that's, if it, It's true if you're, if you're filling out a visa application. Exactly. Single, married, Unless it's or Facebook, actually, it's, there's yeah. no it's single. Technically. For dating. Okay, Technically. so for the millennial definition, right? If a girl came in here right now and gave you a kiss on your face, like right there on your mouth, on, my face. on your <laughs> mouth, stuck her tongue all up in there, will there be another girl in your life that would be upset? Yes, so okay, good. so, so <laughs> millennial definition, you are in a relationship. Okay, what about okay. you? Okay. I'm single. You're single? Wow. Chamaima? You're single. I mean, maybe a, a few people will be upset. I would be upset. Oh, Jemima. You seem like <laughs> you're not as innocent <laughs> as you look. I'm so I mean, yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. Wow. Mm. Okay, you're letting, you're letting your true color show. I like it. I'm digging it. Yes. Okay, so, um, but about this whole, like, dating thing, right? Especially on the internet. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of, like, hashtag single AF, hashtag, like, couple goals. And it seems like those two things are, like, at constant odds. So would you say for millennials right now, especially since, you know, it's getting hotter outside, girls are showing more skin, is it a taboo to be single or is it seasonal? Like, does it depend on the time of year? I mean, okay, so personally, I feel like here, generally, we make it seem like it's a bad thing to be single. I think single is the best place to be. It's like the best time period to work on yourself. So I don't see a problem with being single. Mm. I think as long as you're willing to have the mentality to like, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to mm. do what i got to do. Chase your goals. Considering it's not something you completely have power over. It's like it's not like it's a switch. Exactly. Oh, single, turn it off. Oh, I mean, no I feel more like single. for girls, it's different. But kind of. For you to make it a taboo is just ridiculous. <laughs> So, so, okay, so what do you think that some of the biggest problem is right now with millennial mingling? It's like, why is it that it just seems like our generation can't seem to wrap our head around this whole dating thing? Because everybody wants to have sex. One, and everybody One. has a lot of options. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, I personally, I think that the, the reason behind it is that, first off, people will treat you how you let yourself be treated, whether it's how you want to be treated or not. And so a guy will often go based on, like, his, at the end of the day, I'm a human being. The first contact I have with you before I talk to you is physical. It's, mm. I can't help that because that's the first thing I'm ever going to see. And then based on the way conversation goes, when I do come and speak to you, helps me realize what it is that you're willing and not willing to do. And, and often like that would affect a guy's intentions. Mm. Like I might go in here with all the best intentions, but if you show me that you're willing to give it up faster than I need to work, then I might I'm a human being. Yeah. I might take that up and then Very realize. True. Wait, so are you telling me that there are no good guys that are going to be there like There are good guys. Exactly. Like, let's wait till marriage. Let's just get to each other yeah. and let's help each other build you know, I well. think, I think, I think it's this mirror perception. This, this, this thing where if I meet a girl and the first thing I see, she's hot and everything. And I'm like, okay, I want to talk to this girl. I like how she looks, right? And I get closer and I talk to her and she's smart. That can automatically change my intentions. If my intentions were just to sleep with her in the first place, mm -hmm. and I talk to her and she's actually, she has some depth, it can change my perception. So you said something earlier, you talked about how there's all these options, right? So I was thinking, nowadays, like the internet makes everything so easy because I can go grocery shopping online, I can go clothes shopping online, and now I can go men shopping online. I can just, you know, go to different <laughs> robots and pick whatever it is exactly. that I want. You know, so do you guys feel like this whole Insta life or Insta gratification, do you think that it affects the way that millennials mingle nowadays? Yeah. It I think it does because typically you would have to, I mean, back in the day when there was night hell, I'd pick up a phone, we'd call, we spend hours on the phone, we'd plan when we're going to meet, you know? But now it's like, I can see who you are, 
or at least have an idea of who you are before meeting you. I see all you want us to see, and then I chat you up on Instagram, and I don't even need to see you before we get to that sexual point. So it's just very easy. It's too easy. And when it's too easy, it just takes all the fun away. But what about the people that actually look for that intentionally? Like, the, like for instance, like all these different dating websites, whether it's like, um, you know, Tinder, Plenty of Fish, He Harmony, Christian Mingle, Date My School. You know them. You seem to know them, though. There was a time in my life, you know. I mean, no, there was a time in my life, you know. Okay. okay. This is real talk, you know. Thank you. This is real talk. I'm just gonna put it out there. (laughs) (laughs) But what about those people that actually look for those things? Do you think that it's helped millennials kind of mingle and navigate this whole singlehood, or it's? I don't know. I mean, there's always the odd person. There's always the odd story of people that were, yes, they did it and they found love. I don't think realistically, I don't think that that's the case. I don't think on a whole that that thing works. First off, like the whole idea of instant gratification and Instagram is, like I said, things move too fast, which means you get to the love really quickly, but you also get out of it really quick because things, things move way too fast. I think back in the day when you had a situation where I'm working, you're working, you might get a chance to speak at the end of the day, we're communicating and we're building our relationship. But that's not nurturing this, the feelings, the butterflies in my they stomach, will come. the hashtag relationship goals. They will you see, come. I think that hashtag that's the problem. is one of the biggest problems it's we a problem. have. With the internet thing, Tinder and all the dating sites, yes, I feel like, because every time I go online or once in a while I see stories of how, oh, he slid in her DM. Mm-hmm. My friend got married to somebody that slid in her DM. Hey, but guess what? If I go into my DM now and marry anybody that is there, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in big trouble. Let's just be very honest. So I I can't now say because it worked out for her that way. Oh, that means if it's not working out for me that way, something is wrong with me. No. Maybe if I step out and go to like a reading club or something, I might meet somebody who shares my views. If you like the art, go to a museum, go to an art gallery. But no, we're still on Instagram and, you know, checking who's sliding in the DM. No, I feel like, yeah, you need to go to places where you'll find people that are, I don't know, people you can relate, exactly, that you have similar interests, because I think that's where it starts from. Because anybody can slide into anybody's DM, doesn't, I can slide into any guy's DM, I can... I'm sure there are lots of guys out there, Jemima, that want you to slide into their DM. I'm sure they love guys. Okay. So just, you know, I'm sure... I I, I slide into people's DMs, just maybe not for that reason. I slide into people's DMs for work, I slide into people's DMs... Go (laughs) back, go back! But for me to slide into your DM in terms of, oh, I think there's something mm-hmm. we can build on here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's never happened. Actually, speaking of that, speaking of this whole hashtag movement, with that, there's a hashtag shoot your shot 2018, okay? Yeah. And you just talked about sliding into somebody's DM. Do you guys think that in this day of age, that's the type of push that some, some people need, some, the type of push that some relationships need? I, you know? I think, because, I mean, there are different people. People are different, right? There are people that are too shy to mingle in, in, in person. So the whole hashtag, shoot to shot 2018, makes it easy for socially awkward people to meet people, right? You could have a socially awkward girl or guy who typically would not be able to talk to someone in person. But, you know, what's the worst that could happen if I slide into this person's DM? The person yeah, would not answer me or the person would say no. I can deal with that at the very least. So it's, it's actually helped some people. Easy okay. way to say, oh, it's a joke. I was just for, you know, following the hashtag just in case it doesn't work out. Still, you plan. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a big believer. And I think personally, and advice that I give ladies especially is let yourselves be found, man. Like, I think we put too much pressure, first off, on women to get into relationships in Nigeria, which means that oh, yeah. once you do that, then they are, they're more likely to settle because they feel like they need to be in that relationship. Yeah. Let someone find you, like, a guy that wants you will find you, and he'll find you and he'll work to keep you. Oh yeah. Basically, your mom is out there pressuring you, you're about to be 30, when are you getting married? How do you cope with being single? So, I have an opinion about that, and some people might judge me or kill me or whatever, it's it's fine, but this is what I wish. I have friends who have put pressure on themselves to be in in, in relationships, who their parents have also done the same, right? And what I tell them is, Honestly, relationships, it's, it's, not a big, it's not a beginning or the end of the world, right? There's a lot more you can do in this world than yeah. be in a relationship. It's just, your relationship is one, it, it will happen whether you like it or not. Okay, guys, let's be honest though. When you see those hashtag vacations and like your girlfriend and their guy, they're together, you're always the third wheel, sometimes the fifth wheel. That's like, how do you. Stop being the third wheel. <laughs> no, being the third wheel is great. Look. Out 
of all my friends, I'm pretty much always, or I was pretty much always the unattached single one. And at some point, it started to get to me. There were days I'd cry and think, what, what, what the hell? Who are you? No, no, I'd really? cry. I'm like, no, it, like no because, you know, like, oh, all fine. the guys that kept coming were either, my ex-boyfriend cheated on me like I was crap. No jokes. You get, you meet the one that you think, oh, it's going great. Eight months down the line, he's telling you he's not ready for commitment. Like, by me, what have you been doing with me? Do you get? So things like that kept happening. And I was like, why? What am I doing wrong? Why am I meeting the wrong guys? What's, why is it not clicking for me? When these are engaged, you know, I'm rubbing my friend's name with her boyfriend, Kemi and Femi, this one and that one. And I'm just here like, what is going on? But at the end of the day, I see what you mean or what people say when they say, you know, when the right guy comes, it will be completely worth it. I'm not telling people that are married or engaged, but I'm talking to somebody right now who I've been talking to for a while. And I can actually tell you that when I look at him now and I consider that, well, I didn't settle to just go with the flow with the guy who wasn't ready for commitment or forgive the guy that cheated on me and said it's because, you know, there was such a distance or whatever. And I said, you know what, if it's that I'll be single all that time, I'll wait. It's worth it. It is, because if I had compromised, guess what? I probably wouldn't have met this person I'm talking to right now. You're talking about the other side, right? The yeah. other side, after you've suffered through the desert of men, when they just... Desert, desert of men. There's a desert of no, men, no, man. No, no, like no. nothing to be found. It's a hard life. So when you're in the desert, you can't find water, you can't find anything. How are you coping? Focus on anything else. Exactly. For Look, me, it was more. <laughs> there's, there's so many things. Oh, I think, yeah, And that's the thing. We need to realize that no one is being is defined by whether they're single or in a relationship. Yeah. Honestly, Nobody doesn't no, define you. And we, we've gone to this mentality Real where we talk. think that that is. Real talk. We've gone to this <laughs> mentality where we're like, oh, okay, if I'm not married, if I'm not in a relationship, that means I'm a failure. No. There's so many other things you can do in your life. What if that relationship never comes? God forbid. What if it never comes? Never Are you going to say you're going to do nothing? Now, social media has opened it up for everybody. In those days when there were no social media, People used to write love letters and it was not known. And the process is tedious. Unlike now, because of the platforms that are available, people are making use of it and they take advantage of it to do whatever they want to do, including dating. I would like to date somebody that I actually known, know everything about what the person is doing, know the kind of job he does and everything. Because most of these social media people, you don't even trust them. Some of them are into. 419 and you just see them and some of them are really fake you understand they are really fake if you are single it's not the end of the world yeah you can wake up any other day and just meet anybody so i say if you are single you don't need to give up on yourself there are a lot of ladies in fact as as of now i think there are plenty ladies more than guys now in in the country so i think if you are single it's not the end of the world when you are not married a certain age, it's like a stigma because people believe that there is time for everything, especially when you are a woman. You should get married at a certain age, you should start rearing your children at a certain age, but when you are not doing it and you are taking joy in it, it's like you are having fun. And there are ages that your body demands certain things. So if you are not in that environment of where you ought to be, they will believe that you are, you are doing things outside maybe what married people should do and you are feeling funky with it. So Jamama, what's your number one thing besides sex and communication that you think that millennials aren't really doing or doing wrong when it comes to mingling? Um, I'm going to use the word fantasy to coin it. So for girls, it's always when you meet a guy, you've already planned your wedding, you've already, oh, I'm going to wear a cream dress, I don't want to do this. You've already literally seen him as the guy. How do you guys do that? Let's avoid that. I can't, see. How do you do that? I can relate because I've done it. It's hard. <laughs> it's very hard. Especially when you've been single for a stretch. Exactly. And you're just like, oh, finally, one that looks and then like you just pour good. everything you just into pour, that it's one like guy, you're hungry yeah. they bring the food you rush it and before you know it, you're choking yeah so you need to i feel like we need to just calm down let ourselves give yourself the time to so wait so i him. shouldn't plan our wedding i shouldn't name our baby yet. don't name your baby don't, don't, don't even don't even know i'm gonna ask okay. you to marry him ask the basic okay. things at least know okay. his favorite color okay. before you plan the wedding can i at least <laughs> plan what house we're gonna live in no i shouldn't no. Ever. No. don't do the things <laughs> Don't do the things that if that you wouldn't want to tell him yet. Yeah, exactly. Things that you Ooh, would look okay, crazy if you say to him. That's what well, I mean. Yeah. I'm kind of crazy, so I might say lots of things. But there's some other people at home. Them, then maybe you. Then if you're willing to say them, then you also need a guy that's willing to hear them 
mm. however early it is. So yeah. Also, fantasy for the guys, because in their head, they think you're on the same page. Boy, you need to voice it out. If you're with me just to get to know me and you're not looking to be in a relationship or you're not ready for commitment, please say it from day one, not eight, uh, like eight months down the line when we have already built our castle and planned for our three children <laughs> and how they'll be spending weekends with Grandma A and Grandma B. No, tell me in the beginning so I know what we're doing, right? <laughs> Don't don't be in your fantasy world that oh we're in this together or friends with benefit or chilling guys, though, or whatever. There's a lot of a problem with, with that for guys. Is some guys, you know, a lot of guys want to say like want they're, they're picturing it too. Like they'll be like okay, I can see a relationship with that person. Then they get in the relationship and they're like, yeah. Then they see this person, they be like, oh, oh option. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, yes. That's the, are we, are we allowed yes. to do that? Need, Wait, but then also, like, that. how do you like re-enter singlehood, right? Because if you're not inside a relationship and like you guys thought you, you were on the same page and then you're not, and now you want to, you know, you want to join your fellow single brothers and sisters, how do you go back into that? Because I, I, I suck. I at think that. just be careful. I think it's really just a thing to be careful. Like for me, I was in a relationship for six years. And it was like six years. Lord oh. Jesus! How did you get out of that? Because I'm sure she was like you. Six years of my I life. Mean, <laughs> and, and, and that's, but you know, I feel like we both felt like that, right? And then, and because it's always it's great when in your head you've you've pictured this thing, like you've been like, especially in a relationship for that long use. Like as far as you're concerned, you married. Like yeah, bam. six yeah. years. Six and, years is a long time. He and better so marry me. <laughs> that was me. Like it, it made that I went after that. I went to the opposite end of the spectrum. I was like, I was doing that dating thing. I was like, because didn't you? Because you, you're like, oh, I dated someone for six years and she wasn't the one. What if I jump in with the next person and she ain't yeah. the one? Let me just check out the options. Did a lot of dating around. So you were, so you were online it was shopping. A process. <laughs> and yeah. after that process, and I was yeah. like, okay, I'm ready for the real thing. And I feel like I've worked through whatever issues I had, whatever things I needed. Whatever to PTSD you had. It was like, okay, <laughs> as in was I can't. Six that's years. The oh my that's God. a that's long enough time. Enough relationship PTSD. All right, well, guys, this seems like a really good place to end. Thank you all for being here and joining the conversation about millennial mingles. Uh, I've learned some gems, and I've learned that six years, which is a sentence for murder in certain countries, is not for me. So I'm not, I'm not down for that. But thank you guys very much. Thank you guys at home for watching Real Talk. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms and use the hashtag in Downing Real Talk. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. If anybody dates you for six years, oh no, it's going down. He has I'll, to marry me. I will find you. He has to marry me.